You're probably drowning in AI headlines right now. And honestly, it's hard to tell what actually matters and what's just noise. Trust me, I spent hours digging through this week's announcements, and I found something that changes everything about how we'll interact with technology. This isn't just another update. We're watching AI go from tools we use to agents that work for us. Welcome back to bitbias.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts. Click the newsletter link in the description for weekly analysis delivered straight to your inbox. So in this video, I'm breaking down the five biggest AI stories from this week that you actually need to know about. From OpenAI turning ChatGPT into your personal assistant that can book appointments and shop for you, to Google and Apple teaming up in a partnership nobody saw coming. By the end of this, you'll understand exactly how these changes affect your daily life and where AI is heading next. First up, let's talk about OpenAI's agent mode, because this one's a game changer. OpenAI's agent mode takes the wheel on tasks. Here's where things get interesting. OpenAI just rolled out something they're calling agent mode inside ChatGPT Atlas, and this is fundamentally different from anything we've seen before. We're not talking about a chatbot that answers questions anymore. We're talking about an AI that actually goes out and does things for you in the real world. Available right now in preview for Plus Pro and business users, Agent Mode transforms ChatGPT from a conversational partner into something closer to a digital employee. Imagine telling your assistant, find and book a haircut near me, and then just walking away. ChatGPT doesn't come back with suggestions or links. It browses websites, compares options, and actually confirms the booking. All of this happens autonomously, without you lifting another finger. But wait until you see how OpenAI pulled this off safely. They built something called the Atlas Browser Environment, which is basically a secure sandbox where the AI can interact with real websites while keeping your data completely private. Every single action the agent takes is transparent you can see exactly what it's doing at each step. And if you're worried about the AI making decisions you don't agree with, they've built in manual approval options so you stay in control. This next part will surprise you. OpenAI's vision here goes way beyond booking haircuts or shopping online. They're building toward fully autonomous digital agents that can handle complex multi-step objectives. Think about what that means an AI that could manage your entire workflow, conduct deep research projects, handle your schedule, and execute tasks that currently eat up hours of your day. Analysts are already predicting this could completely reshape productivity and e-commerce. We're moving from an era where AI is a passive chatbot you ask questions to, into an era where AI functions as an autonomous personal assistant that actually operates on your behalf. That's not incremental improvement. That's a fundamental shift in how we interact with technology. Xmeta Duo unveils voice-controlled smart ring. Now, speaking of fundamental shifts, let me show you what two former Meta engineers just launched that caught everyone off guard. Meet Sandbar, a startup introducing a device called Stream. And no, this isn't another smartwatch trying to cram a screen on your wrist. Stream is a smart ring, but here's where it gets interesting. Mina Fami and Kirak Hong, who both have deep backgrounds in human-computer interface design at companies like Meta, Google, and Kate Rell Labs, are calling it a mouse for voice. Think about that analogy for a second. Your mouse translates hand movements into computer commands. Stream translates your voice into instant interactions with AI assistance, note-taking, and music control all without pulling out your phone or looking at a screen. The founder's vision is what they call ambient computing, the idea that you should be able to communicate with technology as naturally as you communicate with other people, without screens acting as intermediaries. You're walking down the street and a brilliant idea hits you? Just tap the ring and speak. Want to skip a song during your run? Quick voice command. Need to capture a thought before a meeting? Stream has you covered. Here's the thing that makes Stream particularly interesting. It enters a crowded market of voice-first devices. Humane's iPin, Limitless Pendant, Bee's Wristband, which Amazon just acquired. 
but Sandbar's approach emphasizes subtlety and utility over flashiness. They're not trying to replace your phone. They're adding a new layer of interaction that's faster and more natural for specific use cases. This signals something bigger happening in the tech industry. As major companies race to reinvent personal computing through wearables, we're seeing a shift toward more human, voice-driven interactions. The simple act of speaking is becoming a powerful interface for daily life, and Stream is betting that lightweight, unobtrusive form factors will win over bulky, screen-based alternatives. Apple integrates Google Gemini into Siri OK. This next one absolutely nobody saw coming, and it's kind of a big deal. Apple and Google, historically competitors in virtually every arena, are reportedly partnering to power Siri using a customized version of Google's Gemini AI model. Let that sink in for a moment. For years, Siri has been, let's be honest, the punchline of digital assistant jokes. While ChatGPT and Alexa kept getting smarter, Siri felt stuck in 2016. Apple has clearly recognized that even with all their in-house AI development, external partnerships might be essential to stay competitive in the generative AI race. Here's what makes this collaboration fascinating. According to reports from McRumors and Superhuman, Apple plans to deploy Gemini within their private cloud compute system. This means that even though Google's AI is powering the intelligence, your data remains encrypted and protected under Apple's strict privacy protocols. It's Google's brain with Apple's security, the best of both worlds, theoretically. The updated Siri will reportedly offer dramatically improved contextual understanding, real-time reasoning, and advanced summarization capabilities. We're talking about moving from a Siri that struggles with basic follow-up questions to one that can hold genuinely conversational, multi-turn dialogues and actually understand what you need. The timeline is notable, too. This new Gemini-powered Siri is expected to debut in March 2026, likely alongside a major iOS update. If this works as promised, it could redefine Apple's entire AI ecosystem, blending Google's cutting-edge models with Apple's trusted hardware and privacy infrastructure. From a strategic perspective, this is brilliant for both companies. Apple gets state-of-the-art AI capabilities without compromising their privacy reputation. Google gets Gemini running on hundreds of millions of iPhones worldwide, massively expanding their AI footprint. It's a rare win-win in the cutthroat tech industry, and it shows how seriously both companies are taking the AI transformation happening right now. Gemini can now make full presentations. While we're talking about Gemini, let me show you another capability that just dropped, and it's genuinely impressive. Google's Gemini Canvas now lets you generate entire presentation slide decks from a single text prompt. Yes, you read that right. Complete presentations from one sentence. Type something like, create a presentation on quarterly sales performance, and Gemini instantly generates a full deck with slides, layouts, and content flow, all tailored to your request. But here's what makes this particularly powerful. You can upload your own documents, reports, or notes, and then refine the presentation through conversational follow-ups. Imagine saying, add more visuals to slide three, or make the conclusion more concise, or highlight the key metrics. The AI understands these natural language instructions and immediately adjusts your deck. It automatically formats slides with consistent themes, visuals, and transitions, work that would normally take hours of manual editing. According to Google, this is part of their broader strategy to position Gemini as a comprehensive productivity suite capable of assisting with writing, designing, and analyzing content seamlessly across all workspace tools. Early testers are praising both the intuitive interface and the speed, with many noting it feels like having a professional designer and writer combined in one assistant. This puts Gemini in direct competition with Microsoft's Copilot in PowerPoint and OpenAI's ChatGPT Canvas, but Google has a significant integration advantage here. Deep connections with Drive, Docs, and Slides mean your entire workflow can happen in one ecosystem. For professionals, educators, and students who spend significant time creating presentations, this could be a genuine productivity game changer. Beyond headlines, let me rapid fire through a few other stories that caught my attention this week because they're too good not to mention. Sam Altman's Tesla drama. After waiting seven and a half years, Yes, you heard that right. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman 
finally canceled his Tesla reservation. His younger brother Jack immediately turned it into a viral moment on social media, with fans joking that AI models are shipping faster than Tesla vehicles at this point. It's become another addition to Sam Altman's growing reputation as one of tech's most memeable figures, which honestly just adds to his charm at this point. Palantir's legal battle. Palantir filed a federal lawsuit against two former engineers, accusing them of stealing confidential data, including proprietary source code, healthcare client information, and algorithmic methodologies to launch a competing startup called Percepta. The company claims the defendants replicated in just 11 months what took Palantir decades to build. Palantir is seeking injunctions and damages, calling it a fundamental breach of trust and intellectual property rights. This case could set important precedents for AI startup competition and employee non-compete agreements. Sora hits Android, OpenAI's AI video generator. Sora is now available for Android users across the US, Canada, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, and Vietnam. After topping the iOS charts with over a million downloads in its first week, the Android launch dramatically expands Sora's reach. The app includes the viral cameos feature that lets you create videos of yourself performing various activities in TikTok-style feeds, OpenAI's clear play to compete with Instagram Reels, and Meta's vibes. And that's your AI news roundup for this week. From autonomous agents booking your appointments to voice-controlled rings and unprecedented partnerships between tech giants, we're watching AI evolve from tools we interact with to systems that operate autonomously on our behalf. If you found this breakdown helpful, hit that like button and drop a comment telling me which story surprised you most. And if you want to stay ahead of the AI curve, subscribe so you don't miss next week's updates. Because trust me, things are moving faster than ever. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.